don't know how to try that good, but here it goes. Oh, uh, this is the Milky Way. Pretty much it. And we got all these other galaxies, like the Spiral. We got them expanding, but we got one of them, and um, they're coming towards us. So it means that like in a billion or maybe gazillion years, that we might die. Like, yeah, this ones are going from the other way. They're expanding. Okay, so a long, long time ago, where were all those things? The, well, the universe was like in a big little ball, like the size of a ping pong, like all this light coming out of it, then the Big Bang happened, supposedly. The big Bang? What's yeah. That? Almost all students have heard the term Big Bang, even if they've never formally studied it in a classroom. At some point, we know that, or believe that there was a speck of matter, um, really dense and really small, but at some point it just exploded. So it was sort of like, well, not this ugly, but like that. Okay, so. And I guess like expanding. <laughs> they have generated ideas about what the Big Bang is, either by making assumptions based on the term itself, or through having encountered some representation of the Big Bang in the popular media. At first it was all just one big ball. And then it, for one reason, it just exploded and everything expanded and went their own ways. And it started to form stars, planets, black holes, nebulas. These students, like most people grappling with the idea of an expanding universe, mistakenly picture the Big Bang as an explosion that took place at some specific location in space, hurtling matter outward. And basically, this very dense speck of matter, once it exploded, released bits and pieces of anything, atoms and rocks and stuff, separated as it cooled down and formed uh, nebulas and galaxies and whatnot. They also tend to compress cosmic time, imagining the Big Bang as a sudden creation of all the current structure in our universe, including our solar system. Boom! And then there was life. And there was life? <laughs> yes, or something that created life. So you, you said boom, would that be an explosion? A noise. A noise? <laughs> and sort of a flash of light. And then there we were, and the dinosaurs. <laughs> when students create a mental model of the Big Bang, I think the universe. they often imagine the impossible perspective of an observer watching the Big Bang explosion from outside of our universe. Few students have encountered the modern scientific view that it was space itself that expanded throughout our universe. Without this new idea, students can easily become confused about what we can actually observe in our expanding universe. Both are moving through space because their um, the universe is expanding. Say they're moving this way, through space, expanding in that direction. So technically you could say that it's moving away from the location of the original um, side of the Big Bang. Okay, where, where would that be? That way. Okay. That way, to my right. Um, because everything expands, I believe, away from where the Big Bang happened. Um, Ray, like many students who have learned about the Big Bang, has trouble visualizing an expanding universe without imagining galaxies exploding outwards from a center of expansion. In the modern view, galaxies are not moving through space. New space is being created between the galaxies. In the past, there was less space, so all the galaxies were closer together. At the Big Bang, space was expanding everywhere, not just at a single point. The Big Bang took place throughout our universe, not just at one location. Improving our understanding of our universe is a lifelong task for students, teachers, and researchers alike.